couldn't crack the shell. Then the lad came up with his sword to see what all the noise was about, and when he saw the egg he thought it a trifle to crack it. So he gave it one blow, and the egg split, and out came a chicken as big as an elephant. "'Now we have done wrong,' said the lad. "'This can cost us all our lives.' And then he asked his sailors if they were men enough to sail to Arabia in four and twenty hours if they got a fine breeze. Yes, they were good to do that, they said. So they set sail with a fine breeze, and got to Arabia in three and twenty hours. As soon as they landed, the lad ordered all the sailors to go and bury themselves up to the eyes in a sand hill, so that they could barely see the ships. The lad and the captains climbed a high crag and sat down under a fir. In a little while came a great bird flying with an island in its claws, and let it fall down on the fleet and sunk every ship. After it had done that, it flew up to the sand hill and flapped its wings, so that the wind nearly took off the heads of the sailors, and it flew past the fir with such force that it turned the lad right about. But he was ready with his sword, and gave the bird one blow, and brought it down dead. After that he went to the town, where everyone was glad because the king had got his daughter back. But now the king had hidden her away somewhere himself, and promised her hand as a reward to any one who could find her, and this though she was betrothed before. Now as the lad went along he met a man who had white bearskins for sale, so he bought one of the hides and put it on and one of the captains was to take an iron chain and lead him about, and so he went into the town and began to play pranks. At last the news came to the king's ears, that there never had been such fun in the town before, for here was a white bear that danced and cut capers just as it was bid. So a messenger came to say the bear must come to the castle at once, for the king wanted to see its tricks. So when it got to the castle, every one was afraid, for such a beast they had never seen before. But the captain said there was no danger unless they laughed at it. They mustn't do that, else it would tear them to pieces. When the king heard that, he warned all the court not to laugh. But while the fun was going on, in came one of the king's maids, and began to laugh and make game of the bear, and the bear flew at her and tore her, so that there was scarce a rag of her left. Then all the court began to bewail, and the captain most of all. "'Stuff and nonsense,' said the king. "'She's only a maid. Besides, it's more my affair than yours.' When the show was over, it was late at night. "'It's no good your going away when it's so late,' said the king. "'The bear had best sleep here. "'Perhaps it might sleep in the ingle by the kitchen fire,' said the captain. "'Nay,' said the king, "'it shall sleep up here, and it shall have pillows and cushions to sleep on.' So a whole heap of pillows and cushions was brought, and the captain had a bed in a side-room. But at midnight the king came with a lamp in his hand, and a big bunch of keys, and carried off the white bear. He passed along gallery after gallery, through doors and rooms, upstairs and downstairs, till at last he came to a pier which ran out into the sea. Then the king began to pull and haul at posts and pins, this one up and that one down, till at last a little house floated up to the water's edge. There he kept his daughter, for she was so dear to him that he had hid her, so that no one could find her out. He left the white bear outside while he went in, and told her how it had danced and played its pranks. She said she was afraid and dared not look at it. But he talked her over, saying there was no danger if she only wouldn't laugh. So they brought the bear in and locked the door, and it danced and played its tricks. But just when the fun was at its height, the princess's maid began to laugh. Then the lad flew at her and tore her to bits, and the princess began to cry and sob. "'Stuff and nonsense!' cried the king. "'All this fuss about a maid! I'll get you just as good a one again. 
but now i think the bear had best stay here till morning for i don't care to have to go and lead it along all those galleries and stairs at this time of night well said the princess if it sleeps here i'm sure i won't illustration the lad in the bear skin and the king of arabia's daughter but just then the bear curled himself up and lay down by the stove and it was settled at last that the princess should sleep there too with the light burning but as soon as the king had well gone the white bear came and begged her to undo his collar the princess was so scared she almost swooned away but she felt about till she found the collar and she had scarce undone it before the bear pulled his head off then she knew him again and was so glad there was no end to her joy, and she wanted to tell her father at once that her deliverer was come. But the lad would not hear of it. He would earn her once more, he said. So in the morning, when they heard the king rattling at the posts outside, the lad drew on the hide and lay down by the stove. "'Well, has it lain still?' the king asked. "'I should think so,' said the princess, it hasn't so much as turned or stretched itself once when they got up to the castle again the captain took the bear and led it away and then the lad threw off the hide and went to a tailor and ordered clothes fit for a prince and when they were fitted on he went to the king and said he wanted to find the princess you're not the first who has wished the same thing said the king but they have all lost their lives, or if any one who tries can't find her in four and twenty hours, his life is four-footed. Yes, the lad knew all that. Still, he wished to try, and if he couldn't find her, twas his lookout. Now in the castle there was a band that played sweet tunes, and there were fair maids to dance with, and so the lad danced away. When twelve hours were gone, the king said, "'I pity you with all my heart. You're so poor a hand at seeking, you will surely lose your life.' "'Stuff,' said the lad. "'While there's life, there's hope. So long as there's breath in the body, there's no fear. We have lots of time.' And so he went on dancing till there was only one hour left. Then he said he would begin to search. "'It's no use now.' said the king time's up light your lamp out with your big bunch of keys said the lad and follow me whither i wish to go there is still a whole hour left so the lad went the same way which the king had led him the night before and he bade the king unlock door after door till they came down to the pier which ran out into the sea it's all no use i tell you said the king time's up and this will only lead you right out into the sea still five minutes more said the lad as he pulled and pushed at the posts and pins and the house floated up now the time is up bawled the king come hither headsman and take off his head nay nay said the lad stop a bit there are still three minutes out with the key and let me get into this house but there stood the king, and fumbled with his keys to draw out the time. At last he said he hadn't any key. "'Well, if you haven't, I have,' said the lad, as he gave the door such a kick that it flew to splinters inwards on the floor. At the door the princess met him, and told her father this was her deliverer, on whom her heart was set. So she had him, and this— was how the beggar boy came to marry the daughter of the king of arabia end of section two recording by shushan okay that was the end of um the second chapter of the book that we watched uh, the east east of the sun and west of the moon which is what it was Yes, mine's, I was, over at Natchez. Um, I'm actually working on building a uh, snowy background for myself right now. And I'm going to, before I finish 
up, I'm going to render it and put it on. So we'll have to see here because I am, I'm going to have to change that size a little bit. Um, let's see. So we just finished that and we'll, we'll see how long this takes. It shouldn't take long. Um, enter. Blink, 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 blink. It's 300, it's 300 frames and it's gone through 50, 40 already. 50, 60, 70. Because I'm making it the right size to kind of fit around me. 120. <laughs> it's smoking along. <laughs> This is crazy. If I, I I'm only making it the size of to to kind of fit behind me. So um, um, you you guys should see see that change in a second here. Uh, holy cow, that's fast. That goes a lot faster than doing a full size. Wow, that's insane. Okay. Um, uh, let's see. Control A, delete. Delete. Control A, X, V. There we go. Should come back in a second here. It should come back in a second. Because I've done it darker. Come on. Come on, background. Uh, aspect ratio automatic. And then. Okay. Uh, let's kind of see the. No, you can't. Uh, let's see. Plus. Add directory. Okay, open. Oops. Remove that one. Remove that one. Add the directory. Open. Okay. And it should come back. Ah, uh, it's not coming back. Hmm. Can you see that? No. Well, that sucks. I wonder what happened. Remove. Yes. Yes, I'm going to be... I'm going to remove it. Oh, I want to... Uh, I guess it helps if I push the right button, doesn't it? Image slideshow. Create a new one. And plus add directory, Riri. go open, go OK, and um, automatic cut slide mode, um, and make it. Oh well, all the that was awesome. That did not work out the way I wanted it. All the all the things were blank. How embarrassing. Let's see. Let's see. Final render. Go back over here. Go back over here. Render at the last one. Look at the scene. Um Let's see. Play the scene. Play the scene. There it is. Ooh. Um. So we got the. I wonder why the colors aren't coming true. Right. <laughs> anyway, I guess I should finish up. Um. I am. I guess I'm gonna finish this up and and just say. The heck with it.
Snowfield. Where where did I mm, mm, stop? In the name of love. Oh, no wonder. In the name of love. Material. Three. And then we'll just do all this. Um, uh, the uh, shift G, select grouped group snowflakes. There we go. Um, object. Transform, nope. Um, um, make link to the materials. Ah, uh, darn it. Object. Uh, Make links to the materials. There we go. Yeah. That's how you do it. And then I'm going to well just do this thingy like this. Have to select the other one last. Or else it gets cranky. Let's see. And then object make links and the group. Uh object make links in the materials is what I want to make links. And we should be able to go over the three and look at the scene. And there we go. And do the play. See that looks so pretty. Hopefully it'll show up on my background. Okay, now let's see. File. Um, file, save. Save it. Save it. And then um, let's try that again. Because i got to do it before I finish. It's only going to take a minute, literally. Almost there. So... If you like, like, subscribe, all that kind of fun junk. Um, next week it'll be the um, some more of this book. That's oops, my mousey isn't moving because I got papers in under it. Um, let's see. Peter Christian Anderson. Let's see here. So next week will be um or Sunday will be probably I'd say three to six, maybe seven. Uh just twenty minutes or twenty five minutes, thirty minutes, yeah, three to eight. Uh three to eight at least, if not three to ten. It all depends on how I'm feeling. And, um, here, we should be done. We are done. <laughs> that goes by so quick. Uh, control A, delete. Control A. Cut it. Paste it. And it should come up on my OBS as, ha ha! Transition speed in 10 seconds and it's, um, or 10 milliseconds and it's 100. No, that looks a bit too fast. 200. And to do. Yeah. 
Yay! Haha! -ha! Look at that! I did it! Let's see. What do you think? Over the face or under the face? It's snowing! It's snowing! It's snowing! It's snowing! <laughs> okay, enough silliness from me. Um, hope you guys enjoyed it, and uh, thanks for coming by, whoever's still here. Love you guys, and have a great night. Boys! Um, run button, there we go.